Hey guys, Akil Mohideen here, and welcome back to another video. So in the last video, we made this 64-bit um, uh, or 128-bit RAM uh, module, and there was one problem with it, and I mean it worked perfectly and all. Just the problem with it was that uh, these yellow wires were how we inputted data. This white wire was how we said we wanted to write, and this orange line, these four orange lines, was how we inputted the address. And if you don't know what any of that means, then go ahead and watch the last video. And so these orange lines, now this is obviously a problem because in a real CPU you don't have someone who is like sitting behind the computer and like manually like sticking wires in different places to put in memory addresses um, for you, right? So we need a way so that this way the CPU can automate the system for itself. It can enter a memory address for itself. And there's two problems with this. One is that we don't have any hard disk space, which means that at some point when we want to enter a program into the computer, we're going to have to enter it bit by bit, the program that we want to run, which means that we're going to need some of these wires to stay. This way we can actually input data um, if we choose to. But then we need to be able to have, like, say, a switch or something, so we can flip the switch and put the CPU into a run mode where it'll go ahead and run the program that we just inputted without us having to touch anything. It'll just go ahead and automate the whole system. And so that's what we're going to work on today. So the first task with that is let's just focus on one of these uh, bits that we need to enter, okay? So we either want a way to, um, we want to be able to say, we want to personally put it in, and then once we flip a switch, say like a select switch, we want the CPU to be putting in its own data. So we need a way to shift between these two values, one where we input it ourselves, and the second one where the CPU inputs the address itself. And the way you do this is what, what we call a uh, two-to-one line circuit, or a line selector circuit. And it's pretty easy. This is for one bit. So you have A0, which is what I'm calling the bit that we input ourselves, the wire that we stick in, um, to either ground or um, positive. And then we have CPU A0. So A0 stands for address 0, obviously, but CPU's uh, address 0 means the address that the CPU puts in itself. So we're not touching anything in that system. So that's right here, and that's right here. So now we have the select, okay? And as you can see, the select goes straight into the AND gate with uh, address zero, and then goes to a NOT gate, and that value goes into this other AND gate with CPU A0. So straight off the bat, because there's a NOT gate right here, um, you can tell that only one of these AND gates will be true at a time. And I'm sure you guys are, I mean, you guys are this far in the series, so you're probably pretty advanced by this point. So you can already see how this is going to play out in terms of like a truth table. But let's walk through this anyways. So a0, let's say that's, um, let's say a0 is 0, and uh, CPU a0 is 1. So if select is high, and remember when select is high, when one of the values for an AND gate is high, we say that this AND gate is now transparent, because whatever value this is, the output of the AND gate is going to be. So if this is high right here, then if a0 is low, then output's low. If uh, a0 is high, then output's high. So it's going to mirror exactly what a0 is when this line is high, when select is high. So when select is high, basically, whatever value is in A0, whatever, you know, what we've, whether, to, whether we've put the uh, wire into ground or we put the wire into positive voltage, we'll automatically go through this OR gate into Q. Okay, so that will automatically be our output. Now, let's go ahead and look over here. So CPU A0, now this is, if select is high, then it goes to the NOT gate, now it's low. So now it's in the AND gate is in an automatic off position. Doesn't matter what CPU A0 is, this is always going to be low. So now since this part is low, we can effectively just like pretend that part doesn't exist. So now we just have A0 going straight through to Q. Now say select is low. So now this top portion is totally off. So we can just go ahead and cover up the top portion. So now we're only looking here. So this is high. So now we are transparent. This AND gate is transparent for CPU A0, and that's going to become Q. So we can choose between representing the value of A0 in Q or representing the value of CPU A0 with this select line. And we can go ahead and build this um, on the breadboard. Okay, so here's the circuit, and here's the same diagram for the circuit. And right now, I believe I have, um, let's take a look. I have A0 set to ground, and I have CPU A0 set to high. Okay. So right now, uh, we have CPU, we have um, A0 coming through, right? 
yeah, we have A0 coming through. Um, oh yeah, and I did this because um, this is automatically high. Remember that because it may seem like, oh, you're not pressing the button, so why is it, why is it high right now? Um, just like the diagram says, why is it high? So it's because they have a pull-up resistor. So right now I have this switch actually connected to ground. Oh, whoops. Yeah, so I have this push button switch actually connected into ground, and I know that's confusing because there's a red wire here, but it is actually connected into ground. And so this way, I'm grounding it whenever I press it. And because otherwise, remember, this is a CMOS chip, so they're actually using a pull-up resistor to turn this value into a 1 um, because it's in this ungrounded state. So right now, it technically is high, and that's why you're seeing A0 out here. But if I go ahead and ground it, we should see CPU A0, which is... Um, high. So that makes sense. So low is A0 and right now the push button switch is technically high because of the pull-up resistor so we're seeing A0 out here in this bit and so this would be the state in which we say uh, this would be our programming state essentially because this is what we would say oh now we can input whatever we want here and this would be our programming state. Yeah, but as soon as we press it the CPU is running itself and the CPU says it's high right now. Um, so there you go. Now there is actually a chip that does this for you. This chip is actually called a line selector, as you might have guessed because, well, that's what it's called, two to one line selector. It's actually made by Motorola, believe it or not. So this is essentially what we want. We have our um, four values that we input ourselves with our switches, and then we have CPU A0, A1, which is the values that the CPU sets itself, and then we have our select line up here, and this is going to essentially go into our 2 to 1 line selector, that's this block right here, and then if select is, uh, say, low, then we want um, these values to be represented in Q, if select is high, then we want these values to be um, we want the CPU to be in a run state and these CPU values to be represented in Q. And this would go into our 128-bit RAM module in the address lines. So this is what we want to build. Okay, so as so here's what's... Um, I realize this is a little bit confusing, but here's our output right here. And these LEDs, this LED array thing I have here has 10 LEDs in it, even though we're only using the first four because there's only four bits for the memory address. And you would know that if you watched the last video, but... These first four bits on this um, dip switch are going to be our lines here. So these first four bits right here, one, two, three, four, um, is actually going to be these lines right here, these orange lines from earlier. And the rest of these aren't going to be used except for the eighth bit. The eighth bit is going to be our program um, slash run mode. So when it's up, when the switch is up. Now, here's the thing. Since these are CMOS chips, remember, they're, um, there's pull-up resistors, which means that we actually want to connect this to ground. So this way, when we press the switch, it's actually grounding itself. So where it says on up here in the top, I crossed that off and wrote off because it's being grounded, so it's technically off. Um, but here we go. So we have our eighth bit right here. And you can see I labeled it because I knew I'd forget because the whole off-on thing is kind of confusing. So if it's up, if the... Uh, switches up, that means we're in programming mode, which means these values are going to be represented. Okay, now, these four, the CPU A0, A1, right, the CPU A0, A1 values that we talked about, um, A0 to, through A3 values that we talked about earlier, those are going to be also in these line selectors, okay, and they're going to be represented on the, on the outputs. But right now, I have them in the ungrounded state. I haven't connected any wires to them, and that's because we have to talk about something called an instruction register before we sort of understand where these values are coming from inside the CPU. And we haven't talked about that yet, so I'm keeping them ungrounded for now. So, but we can see whether we um, are using the programming section correctly. So right now, all of these are on technically because they're on the opposite side of the off section and they have the pull-up resistors. So when we're in programming mode, you can see all fours, but we can go ahead and switch one of these off, the first bit off, and we see that first one turns off. We can go ahead and turn on, turn off this one too. Um, so there you go. One, two of them are off. So this is actually like working right here. So the only last step is to connect these four to the instruction register, which we haven't talked about. I don't know when we're going to talk about that exactly, because obviously now it's kind of important since we're getting to a section where all of the things are sort of molding together. But for now, we're going to keep it ungrounded until I decide when we are going to uh, talk about that. But as you guys can see, this is working, and so we can go ahead and hook up these Q values 
to the um, to these values. So instead of these ones being uh, switches right here, these four lines right here where they are on this chip are going to be hooked up to these Q values here. So that's kind of neat. Um, and we'll do that in the next video. So please like this video if you guys liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohideen and I'll catch you guys later.